I'm going to uh, I actually need to open them myself. But um, so I'm just going to tee this up, and then Ryan and Aaron are going to do most of the conversation. Um, this board meeting that we just had last week, um, I hope now I don't have the slides. It doesn't matter. I, I memorized them. Um, this board meeting we just had this week is the first in two meetings we have for our 2013 planning. And so every fall the board gets together and talks about just blue sky, where are we at? And then, uh, and that happens just now in October. And then that is a feeder for a budget discussion which happens in December. So the management team and all of you are now uh, in the beginning of planning for next year. And we typically use ModFest also as a way to kind of get energy and ideas that, that feed into that process. And so uh, with all that in mind, we, we came into this meeting with three objectives. One was to get the board up to speed and, and see if there's some reactions on what WebMaker is and uh, kind of how you see it and how we see it in the market right now and how to the degree it's been in the market over the summer, the, the summer people have been responding. And so that's the first part of it is what is WebMaker and, and what have we learned so far. And uh, the next piece was to look at what do we think we're building next based on those insights, uh, based on what we already have in the roadmap. And, uh, and so Aaron will talk about that piece. And then we had a quite broad discussion with the board really because this is meant to be a, a bit of a blue sky meeting and a check-in on what does winning look like for WebMaker. So in particular, are we measuring ourselves on learning or are we measuring ourselves on making uh, as a primary metric of our success? So those are the three things we and did. For the I would say for the whole event. We'll have to shuffle. It's probably okay, but we might have to just... Hello, hey, Michelle. Talking. Michelle, we can, uh, we can still hear you. We can hear you. I'm blaming John uh, Devin. All right. Um, so anyways, that's the, that's the uh, agenda. I'll just let Ryan g go into the, uh, the What is Webmaker Now piece. Then Aaron's going to go through the middle piece on where we go next. And then I'm going to lead the... Um, what the, where we headed, or so what does winning look like discussion? It's harder that the slides do this. Um, and I guess the last thing I would just say uh, is please do, as we always do in the Etherpad, make this a live, this lively discussion as we go, uh, but also do prepare to kind of jump into the what does winning look like discussion, and assuming that we can actually get there uh, in the next 25 minutes. It was really one of the most lively board uh, discussions we've had in quite a long time. Um, and, uh, and so I suspect there's similar liveliness of opinion in this group. So Ryan, go ahead. I'm going to put myself back on mute. Uh, thanks, Mark. Um, so as Mark said, we'll divide this up. Um, I'm going to do the where are we now. Aaron will cover where, where do we go next, and Mark will cover what does winning look like uh, as a discussion. Um, the, uh, the part that I'm about to present uh, will feel somewhere between familiar and very familiar for lots of you because you've been living with it and building it for months. Um, the point here was, uh, you know, we engaged the board at a strategic level and very much not uh, at the granular and operational level, and so this was really about helping them get into, um, into the nuts and bolts of, of where we're at and where we want to take it and what our, what our insights and strategy is going forward. Um, and so some of this will feel, will feel familiar, but it's also our best attempt at distilling it um, into something that is, is really simple uh, and easy to grok. Um, so, Mozilla Webmaker teaches the art and craft of webmaking to anyone who wants to make something on the web. That's about code, it's about digital literacy, it's about the values that Mozilla uh, believes in. It's something that starts with projects where users make a thing online, and through that process, they learn about technology and the culture of the web, both how the technology works um, and how to use it. Um, and so I'll run through the component parts of the product. Uh, webmaker.org is the front door to webmaking. Um, it's where people first interact with the product um, through projects, through tools, uh, through badges, and then the events and community component. I'm going to unpack those, so I won't spend a lot of time on this. Projects are core to the offering. They're the first thing that we ask people to do, you arrive at WebMaker, the thing we want you to do is, is make a name. Um, and lots of people arrive at WebMaker by going to an event or coming through the front door of a, somebody shared a thing that I thought was cool, I want to make one for myself, whether it's a, 
popcorn maker project that you want to fork, or you saw a meme that somebody made and then posted in their timeline or in their Tumblr. Um, the projects that live there um, are made by us, are made by our partners, and ultimately made by uh, the community. Second piece is tools. Uh, these are consumer grade creativity software uh, and apps uh, that work in any web browser. Popcorn Maker Thimble and the X-ray goggles are what's there now, uh, and over time that may expand. Um, and as we've partnered with other people, we've also, uh, through projects, directed people to other tools that they can use. The next thing we'll be layering on beginning at MozFest is badges, uh, which would allow people who do those projects and use those tools to earn credentials that create value for them, both showing how they're leveling themselves up and also allowing them to demonstrate the skills that they have. And this includes incremental badges that you earn along the way that roll up into larger um, badges like HTML basics or CSS basics, um, and also uh, literacy badges. Next piece is the events platform, which is a way for uh, people to self-organize, ultimately to find other, other, um, other events and ways to engage, um, and they can create those on their own. So it's a self-organizing platform. We define for the board two audiences uh, that we've narrowed down, and this really comes out of the thinking we did together at the All Hands and then some additional refinement. Um, webmakers and instructors. Webmakers make and learn with online tools. Instructors mentor, build community, and create content. I'll go into a little bit more detail about those. Webmakers are not defined by a specific demographic. We're defining this group by a psychographic. These are, so we're looking for what are the common attitudes, desires, and wishes that these people have. They may be young, they may be old, um, but they all share some of these feelings and these desires. They are people with a thing to say, and they want to express themselves and tinker. Um, so as uh, Chris Lawrence says in the Webmakers video, if you're somebody who's uploading flick, photos to Flickr uh, or uh, creating you know, videos on YouTube, you're on the beginning path to becoming a webmaker. You're already somebody who's expressing yourself online. Uh, and we want webmaker to be a way that you see to level up and make the things that you, uh, that you want to make online even more exciting and worth sharing. We want these people to do three things. Make a thing uh, and then get on a path to making more things learn and earn badges that they can then share and show, uh, and then level up and ultimately teach others. Uh, so we have a couple of uh, case studies here. These are uh, fake studies. They're you know, archetypes of, of the kinds of people that could come into Webmaker. Uh, so Jen, 18, who found webmaker.org uh, online, maybe through a snippet or through another project that, she, that somebody shared with her. She came in the front door of webmaker.org, found a thing, made something great got a badge or two along the way by using a tool and learning a concept, um, and that led her to the process of doing multiple projects. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to mute all lines again. We're getting some background noise. One sec. The conference has been muted. Uh, next case study is somebody comes to us through an event. Uh, so James, 14, went to a Hive workshop. Um, you know, showed up interested in, in, uh, you know, in the topic and sat beside another team who helped them, gave them some peer support as they built their first project uh, and got them hooked on being in the Webmaker community. Um, our second main audience is instructors. Um, you know, these are the people who um, are passionate about helping people learn how to make things on the web, whether they come to us through the education side who see the value of digital literacy, or they come to us through the developer and website who always wish that people had more, uh, more skills and literacy in that space. Um, we had over 600 people this summer who came and helped organize summer code parties that are a part of this group um, and are starting to see that. Uh, as Mark is fond of saying, there are, you know, we see these people like early Firefox adopters. They are the people who originally got it, who sat at their uh, you know, mom and dad's computer and installed Firefox for them and told them why it was better than what other things that were out there. And so they were both sharing the technology but also sharing the values that go with it. We want these folks to mentor webmakers, to teach them, to help assess their projects as we do uh, assessment related badges. We want them to organize events large and small. Um, and we want them to ultimately create project content uh, that gets shared and that populates uh, the project gallery. 
So here's a case study of Daniel. He's you know, a 32-year-old instructor who, uh, after going to some events, made his own project uh, that was used at Webmaker events. Uh, maybe he created uh, you know, a version of uh, Hackable Pong. Maybe he you know, made, a, made a project uh, at one of our events with partners. But seeing that project shared and iterated upon uh, excited him to stay involved and to keep the future both online and in person. So we're four months in. We launched WebMaker in late June uh, along with Thimble. Um, and we've been kind of testing, uh, testing it. When we put it out, we went to the board and said, you know, we don't, we don't want hard targets this year um, for uh, our metrics. We really want to make this a benchmarking year because we actually just don't know how this is going to respond. We don't know what's going to be the best content. We don't know how well the tool is going to work uh, or if it's going to be used the way we thought it would be used. So this is really about a learning process. And so we're coming back to them saying, here's what we've figured out. So we have five insights that we shared with the board, um, and I'm going to go through them quickly, and then Aaron's going to talk uh, in a bit more detail about what we think those mean going forward. Um, in terms of the short term, there's a bunch of uh, things that we're already working on that are kind of the unpacking of what's next from these insights, and then some longer term thinking as well. So the first insight, we talked about this in a previous WebMaker call when I went through metrics. Um, you know, we have users but a limited number have returned. Um, through uh, the heavy PR push and marketing that we did through using Firefox channels, we were able to drive uh, 1.1 million people to come to webmaker.org, um, and a significant portion of them made something um, and tried it out. But what we found is that over time, what we weren't able to offer them was uh, an experience that was a flow. It was kind of a, as Jeff sometimes says, uh, we have visitors, not users. Um, and I think we've all done uh, a lot of thinking about what's next for that. So I'll let Aaron talk about some of the ways that we turn those visitors into users and frequent users. Um, second insight, um, coming from this, uh, this thought around that psychographic profile of a webmaker is that social media users in part form up what we call an addressable market, which is sort of the universe of people who might be able to become webmakers. Um, Pew put out a study about a month ago that said that 50% of social media users either make or curate content. Uh, and if you accept that there's one and a half billion people um, using social media, um, then that represents a, a, a very large potential audience for all web making everywhere of 750 million people. Um, that doesn't mean anything yet. The next thing is for us to figure out what percentage of those people would actually become web makers and what are the things that would motivate them to try that. But it's, we're starting to put real numbers against the amorphous what is a webmaker and a potential webmaker. Uh, next insight, popular content types lead to good projects. And by good projects, I mean ones that people like and share um, and, uh, and, and do and actually uh, take on. So um, the meme generator, when it was put in the Firefox channel, uh, got 3,500 likes in less than 48 hours, and 2,200 people came and did it. Um, and that made it five times more popular than any other project that was in the gallery at that time. Um, and we've seen that the most popular projects that are in over the top 10 over time, like Pop Up, like Robots, um, like Make a Meme, like the Animated GIF, play on the things that people are used to seeing on the web and that they like to share. So there is something there, we think, in playing on that opportunity for people to you know, build on a meme or uh, a, a content theme that is on the web that allows them to then add their own spin to it and use WebMaker tools. Uh, next insight, teachers were the first to get WebMaker. That's why they're our second most important audience. Uh, and if you look at these numbers, which we updated for the board, um, in terms of the, the three buckets we were talking about for contributors, uh, people who contribute code, people who contribute content, and by content I meant uh, we mean projects um, and learning content, and the last group, teachers or instructors. Instructors by far form the largest group, um, and the, you know there are two main reasons for that. We think one, they they naturally get it, and two, they were the first group that we built out the full uh, the full offering that we it was clear what to do. There was a site for them to self organize the the uh, the documentation was there for them to get engaged. So you know, that's a group we really want to focus and build uh, in order to bring WebMaker to scale. 
And the last insight uh, is that the field's getting busy uh, and growing fast. Uh, there are a lot of players in this space. Um, we think, and, and I think we're right, that the way that Mozilla approaches web making and making in general is different from lots of other folks in the market. And that creates an opportunity um, both to spread our web maker um, our WebMaker tools more broadly than just what we offer and have other people use them. And so you see folks like DIY.org using WebMaker projects in their gallery. Or to make those people partners. And so you see people like Telefonica and the Born This Way Foundation and Code Academy who are doing stuff or trying to do stuff with us. Um, and so that's, uh, you know, I think a, a huge opportunity for us. Uh, it's a competitive space in terms of mindshare. There's only so many hours in the day that people can web make with different things. But it's also a huge opportunity for people to come into a big tent that's about making, which is our ultimate goal. So my last slide, what do we want to do next? We want to talk about how this affects our plans, which I'll hand off to Aaron. Um, and we're going to have a discussion about what winning looks like. I'll just pause there before I hand it over to Aaron. Are there questions or comments about anything in that section? Uh, or the way that we've characterized things, or things that aren't clear. Uh, I'm just looking at RC here. First question is about online credentials and badges. Aaron, do you want to unmute and, and respond to that question at 252? Uh, and while you do that, I'll take the one at 255, which is uh, why do we use fictional characters? Uh, the main reason is that uh, as we frequently do, we turned around the board slides really fast and didn't, didn't have time to go chase down real folks. Um, and the board called us out for it too. Brian gave us a bit of a poke and said, why don't you use real people? Uh, and he's right. And so I think going forward, we'll do that. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Um, so on the credentials question, um, I think, Matt, you, we need, probably need to have a conversation with you to um, to sort of align the way that we talk about this to make sure that we are all on the same page. But um, I think personally, and I, we've talked to the team a little bit, that credentials is, um, is stronger than certification because certification often means um, something that's kind of happens at the end, is pretty abstract, you know, kind of like a degree type of thing. Um, and, and certainly there will be badges that look like this, but we're talking about a much broader range of badges that are sort of capturing learning along different um, along the entire way and then are used as those kind of records or illustrations of what you know, which is more like credentials. That sounds good. I, I like the word and I, and I will use it. Cool. Uh, question line 261, I'm not sure who posted it, but I'm not, I'm not sure I understand the question. Uh, the focus on web making because we kicked off with events rather than self-directed. Can, uh, can the post for that question uh, unmute and elaborate? or edit the question. Hey, it's Carla. It's my question. Um, so you said one of the primary audiences that we were focusing on had to do with teachers, and I'm wondering if some of that actually had to do with the fact that we focused on events um, and that it wasn't necessarily arrive at the site and then do something exciting, but we kicked off with the summer code party and therefore it kind of lent itself towards having people who ran the event rather than uh, having people arrive at the site. Uh, yeah, I mean, I. I lean towards that a bit in the, in the, when I presented the slide that part of why we got those folks is because we actually built the thing that uh, attracted them, right? Like we, we had all the, all the tools you need to become an instructor. That was the easiest way to contribute. And so no surprise that when you build those components that you see that, uh, you see that response. But I, I think there's also something there, and, and it's a theory we want to continue to test, but that um, there is a latent demand or there's a group of people who have a natural fit with what we're trying to do, and that they both come from the education space and they come from the um, sort of web space, the web creator space, that want to share what they know and help people uh, learn. And that that's a group of people that uh, both add a lot because we don't know all the answers and also can help us scale because there, you know, there aren't that many of us. And there's a piece of this learning that um, that happens very differently in a peer interaction than it does just online. So I, I'd say that that's a, it's a, a hypothesis we're still testing, but one we want to keep working on this year. And it, it's Mark here. If I can just say one thing on that, which is, you know, I, I think if you look at Scratch, which is arguably the most 
popular product in this category with teachers, um, it is designed to be self-directed. And there's just, as Ryan says, such a huge unpent, untapped demand, both amongst teachers and actually amongst people who write curriculum and policy, because there's nothing in the market uh, that those people can use as a part of what they're doing. So whether it's an individual or somebody writing a national curriculum or anybody in between, like there really are just no product self-directed or not. And the self-directed products are often the ones that teachers will pick. So I, I don't see it as a dichotomy, I guess, uh, although I do agree with Ryan with the test start these days. Um, 266, to what extent does instructors mean teachers in the public school sense? Um, we've been using instructors to mean people who are helping to teach web making, whether they are certified educators in the, in the field or not. Um, so we're not specifically saying we're talking about teachers uh, who are, you know, went to teacher's college and now teach for a living. Uh, what is our theory about how we turn visitors into users? I'm going to let that question hang for a bit because Erin's going to address it in her slides and then we can ask it again if, if it doesn't feel answered at that point. Um, and maybe let's leave the policy question until we get to the what does winning look like because it comes up there. Uh, and then we, again, we'll come back to it. If you don't feel like it was answered, we'll come back to it. Uh, so let me hand it off to Erin. Uh, I'm going to run Erin's slides from here, so apologies if there's a bit of a delay, and I'll try and anticipate. Erin, over to you. All right, thanks. So I'm going to do my slides to the tune of Thriller. No, just kidding. Um, all right, so where do we go next? Um, so I guess one disclaimer before I get into the slides um, is that, again, these were built for the board, so they're very kind of where will we be in 2013. Um, kind of focus. So it may be frustrating for some people given that it's not um, an exact roadmap or very specific, but um, just know that we're also working on that in parallel and we'll have that um, over the next couple of weeks to share with people, but um, this is just kind of a, a framework. So, so <coughs> we're going to actually know that, um, that we, we sort of laid the foundations, as Ryan said, um, to something that, that people are interested in, but we really want to take it to the next level or the next 10 levels to, to build something that people really, really love and both want to come back to and, and potentially even need to come back to um, for things like skill development. So there's really three steps, um, and I'll, I'll go into each one. And in fact, I'll present on the first two, and Mark will say a little on the third. But we really um, want to ship the core features. We want to look at those insights that Ryan introduced and, um, and think about what that means for product strategy and product features. And then we want to um, be kind of playing in that fuzzy edge space to figure out what's next. So on the shipping core features, um, we, you know, we, as many of you on this call know, we launched a bunch of stuff this year. Um, we launched the WebMaker brand. We launched Thimble. We launched um, initial versions of Popcorn Maker. So we really have laid a lot of the foundation pieces, but, but we launched all of those as kind of individual standalone things. Um, and so what we've been working on over the last few months and will continue is, is wrapping all of this together into um, the WebMaker product. And that means um, you know, the top level types of experience, things like single sign-on, um, localization so that we reach broader, um, broader audiences, and things like the gallery. So we really want to focus on kind of finishing, if you will, those foundations. Um, oh, before you change it, there's one more piece of that. Um, in for over the rest of this year and early next year. But then the next step is kind of building on top of that, like more, M-O-A-R, of, of that stuff. So we, we're going to launch the initial badges and we launch the initial projects, but, but we really um, want to sort of shift gears to focus on building out badges and projects that cover a much broader set of skills, um, including things like JavaScript. So this is all going to be stuff that you guys will see in that roadmap um, coming out in the next couple of weeks. All right, next slide. So step two then is really taking those five insights that Ryan um, talked through and thinking about what that means for the, for the product. So the, the first one is um, – oops, sorry. Next slide, Ryan. The first one is um, that we have users um, but a limited number return. So um, Ryan kind of went into this into detail, but the way that Jess talks about it, and in fact it just came up in the Etherpad, is that we've had visitors, but we don't have users. Um, and so really 
to me, and, and a lot of the conversations I've had, a lot of the work we've been doing over the last few months is already working in, in the direction of solving this problem. So the fact that we're thinking about it as a product, we're thinking about this top level experience, we're already starting to make that a better experience for people and hopefully something that they want to come back to. But there's a lot of other stuff that um, we both could do and we've been thinking a lot about that can really help here too. So where it says action here, it's, it's, these, are not, um, these are not actually things we know we're going to do, but it's more like ideas. Um, so it's like potential actions we could take. Um, so we've been talking a lot about the concepts of kind of learning playlists. So the idea or project play playlist. So you, you did one project and then we recommend to you what's the next one that you should do. Or you can say that you like a particular topic or, or, um, or sort of interest. You have a particular interest and we can suggest a bunch of projects or experiences for you. Um, also, the badges themselves already start to create the, this kind of sort of pathway environment where um, ultimately you can kind of see the universe of badges that are available and kind of where you're at in there and, and actually um, find lots of different ways that you can go. So that, that could motivate people to keep coming back and, and quote unquote level up. Um, and then dashboards, which Jess has been thinking a lot about, which is like you can set goals. You can really kind of get more, um, more ingrained. So that's one piece of it that, that we're certainly thinking about. And, and another one is just that, the, again, the projects are the entry point for people. And we keep talking about interest base, and, and I'll, I'll go into that a little bit more a little later. But we want to make sure that there's things that people want to make, basically. And um, we have the sort of initial set. We've been working hard to get partner content in there. But what, where we want to get to is that we have this kind of co um, constant flow of projects um, that are coming in that are addressing a bunch of interests, um, that are things that we can celebrate and you know, send out newsletters about on a maybe weekly or, or biweekly basis. Um, and again, as we've talked about a lot, this necessarily means that Mozilla is not the one that's producing all of these projects that, that we're really working on. Um, generating a lot of this through the community and through our partners. Um, so that's the first insight. The second one um, is – I don't have these memorized like Mark. <clears throat> oh, is it, so is it social media is, our, um, is a addressable market. So again, um, the people that are already um, posting on Tumblr or already using Twitter um, are people that already potentially – have something to say and are comfortable with sharing it. So that, that, it, that does seem like a um, kind of low-hanging fruit for us. And so some ideas around how to actually um, make it easier for them or um, more attractive to them is one is um, really making it easy to pull content from those social networks. So imagine if somebody could pull a picture of their, you know, their best friend or their Friday night or whatever into Thimble um, and actually make a web page around that or make a meme around that. Um, or you know, pull, pull a video that they just made of their little kid and, and make an awesome popcorn video around it. So um, that's a way to make the projects real right away, personal and customizable right away. Um, and then another idea, and we're already working a lot on this, is just that sharing is a top tier feature. It's not just an afterthought. It's not just some things that are um, – some logos that are thrown into the publish experience, but it's it's, it's really part of the experience so that you, when you're making something, it's, the, it's, it's all for the sharing aspect. And, and things like the gallery will really help with this as well, um, and, uh, and, and just different ways that Jess is working on that, that published experience. So that's the second insight. Um, the third one is that um, popular content types are good for projects. So uh, Ryan already talked a bunch about this, but um, you know, we keep – referring to projects as um, interest-based. And I don't think that means a lot to a lot of people. It probably means stuff to um, some of the academic crowds. But um, the, the kind of shorthand for where, where we want to go next is really taking a look at across the Internet and seeing what, what things people like, like what, thing, what makes people laugh, what, people, what things people share, um, kind of what the trends that you see there, like things like animated GIFs, um, mashing up music videos, um, uh, cooking uh, videos, etc., and and basically replicate that. Like make projects around that. Make it easy for people to make that stuff through WebMaker, but but add that learning layer in. Um, that's three. So Ryan, you're a couple slides behind. Um, for the fourth one is. Um, the teachers are the first to get WebMaker, and you know teachers are, so far have really been kind of our early adopters, and it's it's the most probably the most straightforward of our um, ask for our our contributor types um, because this is kind of what they're doing already, and so we're um, we're working 
you know, uh, Chris Lawrence and his team are working pretty hard to help translate our stuff to fit into kind of what they do every day. Um, but uh, the, the kind of what we know we're going to do, and this one actually is an action. It's not just an idea. Is is really foster and build this this uh, instructor community so that we have this growing set of people that um, that feel comfortable teaching this, that want to teach this, that have the materials that that they need, or are re actively remixing the stuff that that's up there. And so it's it's ultimately like a year-round summer code party instead of something that we have to, you know put um, bookends on or really have to drive as a campaign, we want to just have this, this kind of um, ecosystem where this is constantly, um, constantly occurring and that they're getting the support that they need and, um, and that kind of thing. And then the other piece is just is the other end of that is just making it easy for people to find those events, right? Like helping um, teachers find each other, helping learners find the events that teachers are running, um, sort of fostering that, those idea of clubs or things that people um, can go back to again and again for, for learning experiences. And then finally, the final insight is that the web making field is growing. And, and we went back and forth a lot on what to call this slide because one way to look at this is competition, that there's a lot of competition out there. But really, a lot of these people actually really want to play with us. So I think our biggest to do next year, um, and this is more of an idea because we, we need to figure this out, is, is how we create that framework to actually play together. So how we make it easy for people to plug into WebMaker, um, and that might be opening the doors completely so that people can create projects and create badges and kind of throw all of their content in, or that may look like um, you know, us pushing people out to various sites for learning experiences and them coming back to us for like the assessment and the badge issuing. So there's lots of different scenarios of, of what that might look like, and I think we need to, um, we need to get get real on that pretty quickly. And I guess the good news is, is that it, it is already happening. Um, we don't really have a formal process for it, but we are, are already working with um, like Lady Gaga and Telefonica um, who, really, who are already developing symbol projects and, and kind of thinking about how to tap their audiences into us. And then there's DIY.org, which at, at face value, as we saw, some of us saw through some of the emails, is, is a, comp a direct competitor. But when you really look at what they do, they're focused on a very specific audience um, they're more of a sort of platform to deliver all of all of this stuff, and in fact, they already have Hackasaurus on there as one of the options. So, so again, there's lots of ways that um, that we can work with these people, and that's that's just something that we really need to kind of build into the core product going forward. So that's those are my slides. So step three, I'm going to hand over to Mark for looking to mobile and beyond. Maybe. Mark, you're going to have to hit star seven again to uh, unmute. If Mark can't come in, I can. Yeah, so I, I'll talk and then Mark can cut me off. So basically, um, again, the step three is Hello. about. Hello. Step, oh, oh, there he is. Hey, Mark. Sorry. Go ahead. I'm going to file a bug against Android. Uh, Phone UX. Um, so yeah, the, the third piece, and the reason I'm taking it on is because it, it's sort of on me to figure out how we do some of this, is there's clearly stuff beyond the immediate horizon that uh, we know we want in WebMaker, but we don't know what we want to build yet. And one of my goals for 2013 is to carve out those lab-like product exploration questions, which you know on the deck right now are hackable games and, and mobile. Uh, so that we don't have those distracting us all the time in the core product and zigzagging back and forth, but we actually have a rigorous way to play uh, and explore on what we have hunches on as being very fruitful areas to explore. Uh, and so we'll find some way to do that, probably with David Asher's help next year, under some sort of labs banner. Uh, it doesn't mean that only people who have a labs hat on get to explore. I think what we want to do is find just a method where all of us who are interested can kind of come and play with some of these questions. Uh, but certainly at a practical level, the two high priorities at this stage uh, are figuring out what do we mean by web making and mobile, which I'm, I'm hoping because of some of a tool and Jess's experiments, um, we can actually uh, make some early progress on next year without too much exploration. Uh, and then what do we mean by hackable games and, and you know, where can hackable games be 
you know, the big breakthrough way that we get web making into the mainstream, which I, I think it, it can, be. although I think some of the kind of music and video stuff around popcorn might also be a big breakthrough. So that's to say, you know, third commitment for next year is to build out that way to explore the product features or, the, or domains that we have a hunch on and to um, do that systematically. And also to tie it into the communities that we run, you know, like Open News or the Living Docs World, where there's actually a lot of the talent that could explore some of those questions with us. So that's the, the third piece of, I think, a pillar of what we'll focus on next year is that kind of very focused product exploration. And now I'm done that part. So I guess, Erin, are you going to facilitate questions for this section? Sure. Um, we have two minutes left, so I don't know uh, what we're going to do with the what's winning conversation. We, but, can probably, um, we can probably just take questions on this, uh, and people may implicitly have ideas on what winning looks like as a part of this, and we can have a, maybe a discussion about what winning looks like uh, as we come back from LASA. So um, line 316, what is our theory around how we turn visitors into users that keep coming back and go further? So I addressed a lot of this. Um, if, if there's still questions here, um, maybe just put some sub bullets in. But, but you know, the badges, um, a lot of the learning playlists, the, um, basically most of everything that I was talking about is like um, building stuff that people care about um, and making it uh, giving them kind of pathways or, or ways to sort of level up their skills or um, kind of continue on their interest path. Um, what are our goals with respect to policy? So I think that kind of goes to the what's winning conversation, this kind of bigger conversation about what we're ultimately trying to do. So maybe I'll, I'll, I'll get through some of these other questions and we can come back to that. Um, 318, there seems to be a thesis I've heard repeated that what is preventing folks from becoming web makers is a lack of products. Have we heard anything from instructors, potential web makers, or test of this thesis in any way? Uh, okay, yeah, the answers. So I don't, I don't think we've. I mean, we've definitely um, quote unquote tested this anecdotally, right, through our hack, hack jams and through a lot of the summer campaign types of stuff. Is like, what what is it that people are gravitating to? Where where is it that they get stuck? like what types of environments um, help them just kind of plow through those kind of stuck points. And it, it definitely seems, again, anecdotally, that, that when it's something that people care about making for themselves or care about um, sort of expressing, that, that that in and of itself is motivating and, um, and can, can kind of push people through um, some of the tough parts or make them sort of um, really start to think about how they could how they could uh, expand their understanding. Like Michelle Beck talks about, you know, teaching um, some kids and having somebody be like, oh, I really, really want to add a link to this page, even though there wasn't a link on the project. So, like, those are the types of um, experiences that we want to to make. Um, and yeah, our just what we've seen so far in our working theory now is just that it's it's helping people find something that they really care about making that um, that is a way in. So that said, um, I think that um, some of the stuff I was talking about, about like, um, and I know there's a question on 323 about this, but like pulling content in from social networks um, could actually make that a little easier. So the onus wasn't really on us or the project creators to actually make something that, um, like really figure out everyone's interest and have that represented. But if you had a basic project that was, you know, like the meme maker, for example, that has um, an image and then has uh, text over that image. Um, if we made it easy for people to pull in an image that that actually they owned or that that it's about that's their friends or themselves or whatever, like that already becomes something that's a little bit more personal and aligned with interest um, than just that sort of laughing squirrel or whatever it's called squirrel uh, picture that we have there. Um, so those are the other kinds of things that we're thinking about. Like instead of us having to have a project for everything, like how do we create kind of a generic experiences that people can really easily, easily customize and personalize. Um, so I think that on line 323, the question was just what does that mean um, about pulling content from social networks, automatically pulling in images and videos defeats the point of learning. So 
the way that our, a lot of our projects work now is that there is an image in there already and that we ask people to go out and find another image and replace it. So we ask them to replace the URL. Um, and so that's essentially what we're talking about here. It's not, it's not making this more abstract. It's about um, kind of giving the, helping them use their existing library of, um, of personal content um, as some of that content that they could pull into to Thimble. Um, let's see. It may be hard to define audience purely by psychographic if project content is a primary point of ent uh, entry. Some may skew young. What, where are we gleaning these psychographics from? Um, so, uh, Ryan, please jump in here if you want from a product marketing standpoint. But I think you're right that a lot of our projects um, are young uh, oriented so far. Um, we have a lot of, we're working on a lot of stuff that is more um, general, like a portfolio, a fan page, those kinds of things. Um, so, and we also are, are really uh, hoping to lean on various partners for um, building out some of this as well. So, um, well, I, 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 if I could jump I, in here, and I think the mistake would be to assume that. We're going to try and figure out the one generic thing that we can make that everyone will like. Um, we're going to make different things that appeal to different people, and we're also going to make things that are generic enough that um, in their theme that people can remix them in their own way. So the pop-up video one is, is one that stands out for me um, because um, when uh, the folks at TED got a hold of it, where their average age is like 30 to 50, they saw a bunch of ways to use it. When kids get a hold of it, we've seen them use it totally differently. Um, and that is a great project. It's one that people can, you know, they get inspired by the potential of it and the platform or the technology becomes almost a bit invisible as they're led by their interest. Um, we're, you know, but at the same time, there may be things that skew one way or the other. I, I appreciate being called young because I like teams. Uh, but like, I think we'll do both. We'll make stuff that, that people can run with in their own directions, and we'll, we may make things that are themed for a particular audience. I mean, the work we're doing with the Born This Way Foundation is like that, uh, where it's really targeted versus other, some other things. And it's Mark here. Can I just maybe say one more thing, which is, um, you know, the reason they skew young, as Aaron said, is that we don't have the right stuff yet, and I think that's really what you're hearing, or what we're hearing or observing from where we are is we actually need more of the kind of stuff Ryan's talking about, both diversity and stuff that has a, invites a lot of open-endedness. And I would just say it's on all of us. I think Brett and the popcorn team are starting to do a good job of who they brought from MozFast to look around at the Internet and look for people who have that pop-up video or that meme generator. Mark, did we just lose you? Mark, we're not able to hear you. Yeah, so I think so Mark was just talking about what I um, mentioned on that slide about the popular content equals good projects is like looking across the internet to see what people like um, and what you know what were trends, what were what were memes, and and replicating that um, uh, with the learning added on as well. Um, so the, uh, the last question, and then we're six minutes over. Um, on line 336, it seems that the space becomes more crowded, the badges become a key part of the overall strategy. would be interested to hear an overall state of badges and roadmap. So, so absolutely. Um, so several things. One, um, I think uh, that the badges are a key part of figuring out what that framework is for how we work with other people. Um, so that, that is an absolutely important piece that we're going to be talking more and more about is, um, is it, it, our badges that connector that, that sort of tie together all of this, this broader um, web making audience. Um, and then uh, it's also something that obviously is becoming more core to what we do as we all know um, and will be a way that we're sort of um, uh, helping people understand what we're teaching, helping them find access points and, and ways to kind of in pathways in, in what we're teaching and then also ways that we can track. So um, I think it's... Oh. Did we, we just lost Aaron as well? So 
I think maybe there's a game of uh, web maker call werewolf going on here, and uh, Mark and Aaron just got taken out. Um, the zombie apocalypse may also be upon us. Uh, the the, the zombie apocalypse, for those of you who may have seen the, the Joss Whedon video that came out uh, the other day. Um, so why don't we wrap it up there since we're at the end of the call anyway. Um, we'll keep an eye on the questions, uh, and there's already some, there's some good discussion going on here. And I think we'll bring this back uh, post MozFest to both revisit the end of this conversation, because I think kind of going through MozFest will allow some of this to germinate for folks. And then also we'll talk about the what is winning look like discussion that we had with the board, their responses, and also really interested to hear what you guys have to say. So Matt, can I just throw it back to you and then sure. we can convene. Cool. Um, so yeah, I think we'll wrap up there. Apologies to, to Carla. She's agreed to make her new WebMaker project on line 352 the first item in next week's call, which will be our um, last call before MozFest, obviously. Um, another quick nonverbal update in line 392 along around uh, Badge Bingo. Check that out. And otherwise, I think we will uh, sign off uh, and return you to your regularly scheduled Halloween activities. Bye, everybody. Thanks for a great call. Talk to you all next week. Thank you. Please stand by.